Hi Clubbers, it's Miss Mary, and I wish I could see you in person, but even though we can't be in person, I'm so glad that I get to share how amazing God is with you today in this lesson online. And so we're gonna talk about how God is our provider today. Now, have you ever needed something? Maybe you needed some school supplies. Who did you ask? Probably mom or dad, maybe to go to the store with you, buy you some school supplies. Maybe you couldn't reach something on a very top shelf and you could ask an older brother or sister to help you because that's what you needed. Well, whatever you needed, you probably found someone that could help you with that problem and that's who you asked, of course. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about today is that we can ask God for what we need to and God can take care of us. Now, I'm gonna to talk to you today about a person in the Bible named Elijah and how God took care of him in a very amazing way. So Elijah was a prophet. That means he was a servant of God, a man of God, and he gave out God's message. And so he had a very hard message that he had to tell the king. Now the king's name was Ahab and he was known for being very, very mean and evil. And so I'm sure Elijah really did not want to go and tell him this message because Ahab was not going to like this message from God. But Elijah obeyed God and he took this message to King Ahab. He told King Ahab that because King Ahab had disobeyed God and done wrong, that God was not going to send rain in the land for many years, not even dew on the ground would fall in the morning. Well, of course, when there's no rain, what happens? Plants can't grow. And if plants can't grow, we can't have vegetables and cattle or animals cannot eat that. And so there soon will be not a lot of food and people will go hungry. And so King Ahab, of course, did not like to hear this message at all. Now, people did get hungry in the land, but God took care of Elijah. First, he showed Elijah where a stream was. Now, of course, that's very important because Elijah needed water. And so he could get some water from this stream and drink it. And God showed him right where to go and provided him what he needed, water. But that wasn't all Elijah needed, was it? He also needed some food. And so God provided food for Elijah in a very special way. He had some birds, some ravens, some black birds come and they would come see Elijah in the morning and in the night. And each time they visited him, they would bring bread and meat to Elijah. And so that's how God provided for his food with these ravens, these birds bringing right to him bread and meat. That's a pretty amazing way that God supplied food to Elijah. God provided for Elijah. He took care of him and he will take care of us too. He promises to meet our needs. Now we might not get every Game Boy that we want or important toy or something like that, but he will provide what we need. And that's exactly what he did for Elijah. He provided water, he provided the food, and he did it in a pretty amazing way with these ravens, these birds. Now, I wanna to read to you a story about a man. This was probably around 150, maybe almost 200 years ago. It was a man named George Mueller and he had an orphanage and he had a lot of children that needed care because for some reason their parents couldn't take care of them and he brought them in and he had a lot of kids there to take care of and he trusted God to provide for them too. So I'm going to read you this little story today. George Mueller was used to provide to God providing his needs. God had provided the money necessary for him to buy a large house and start an orphanage and God continued to provide what was needed to keep the orphanage going. But sometimes it seemed to George that the Lord waited until the last minute to meet his needs. Oh well, it was probably helping his faith to grow. Today wasn't all that different from other days when George had trusted God for a miracle. It was time for breakfast, but there wasn't a scrap of food to feed the children. George had the children sit down at the tables where plates and glasses and silverware had been placed ready for breakfast. The children sniffed. They didn't smell any food cooking. Then George asked the children to bow their heads as he thanked God for the food, even though there wasn't any. Father, we thank you for the food you are going to give us to eat this morning. And thank you for all you have given us in the past. Amen. Suddenly, 
was a knock at the door. George walked to the door, opened it, and found the town baker there. Good morning, sir, said the baker. Last night, the Lord woke me up and told me I should bake some bread for you and your orphans, so I did. I have it with me. Oh, thank you, friend, but I'm afraid we have no money to pay for the bread, George replied. Oh, no, no, said the baker. I could not ask you to pay for bread that God asked me to bake for you. And with that, the baker went back out to get the bread. George sent some of the children to help carry the bread inside. A couple of minutes later, one of the boys returned with his arms full of bread. Mr. Mueller, guess what? He said excitedly. While we were helping the baker get the bread, a man stopped and asked if we could use some milk. He was driving by in his milk delivery truck, and when one of the wheels broke, he said he needed to get rid of the milk to lighten the load, and we can have all we want. The orphans grinned, and so did George. Of course we want the milk, he said. Let's go and tell the milkman. As they hurried out the door, George said, thank you, Lord, you've done it again. And I think that's just a really neat story of how God provided for someone who was taking care of others and who had great faith that God would take care of him. And we can feel that same way because God will provide for our needs. God will take care of us. Now you might think, what is my greatest need? Well, when we think about it, our greatest need is that we need a savior. Now I wanna talk and mention some of our Sparks verses, and I'm sure some of you in TNT still remember these, or you've had them too. And even a Cubby's verse falls in here, so you all will know some of these verses, I think. But we need a savior. James 2.10 tells us, whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. So that tells us we've all done something wrong. We've all broken something of the law. And so we're guilty of breaking the law. We've sinned. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every person has disobeyed God and sinned. Well, once we've sinned, we cannot go to heaven with that sin. We've fallen short of the glory of God. Well, that's a big problem. We have a great need because we need a savior. And 1 John 4.14 4 tells us the father sent the son to be the savior of the world. And God sent Jesus to come to earth to be our savior. He died on the cross, even though he had done nothing wrong. And he took our sins, our, puni our sins punishment for us. And he didn't deserve that at all because he had done nothing wrong, but he took our punishment for us. And since he is God, he can take away our sins. So 1 Corinthians 15, three and four tells us, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So what that tells us is what we need to believe about Jesus, that he died on the cross for our sins that he was buried and that he rose again, he conquered death. And that's really exciting to me because now he's up in heaven preparing a place for us. And all we need to do is accept his free gift of salvation. Trust him that he died on the cross for our sins and can take away our sins and has the power to do that. And Acts 16, 31 tells us, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. It's a promise right there in the Bible. So I hope that you will consider if you have trusted Jesus as your savior, if you have believed that you are a sinner, that Jesus died on the cross to take away your sins and paid the penalty for you. And if you have confessed your sin to him and trusted him as savior, if you haven't done that, I pray that you will do that today. Talk to someone who knows about Jesus. I know they'd be happy to talk to you. Or if you understand all about it, you can pray and just tell Jesus those things that you are a sinner and that you trust in him and ask him to take away your sins and then make him Lord of your life. And that's all it is. It is a free gift. We don't have to do anything but believe. Hey boys and girls, welcome to Awana. For today's game, we're gonna be playing marbles. And it's super simple. All you have to do is draw a circle on the ground or you can make a circle out of string. Scatter your marbles within that circle. Make sure to hold back one marble. That's gonna be your shooter marble. And what you're going to do is you're gonna flick that with your finger or your thumb. And you're gonna try and get all those marbles that are inside the circle outside. 
That's all for today's game. Have fun. Are you taking over Josh the Game Guy again? Uh... <laughs>